Hello and welcome to another edition of an English guy watching wrestling. I'm the English guy, I'm Nick. Thank you so much for clicking on another video. I do appreciate it. And as you've noticed, I am in a different location than I usually film my reviews. But today I'm in an undisclosed, or was that undisclosed location? I'm somewhere else for a few days. But you know what? The reviews must go on and I'm going to continue doing reviews. So with that being said, <laughs> we'll be covering the 31st of May 2021 edition of AEW Dark Elevation. And it was a very good show to be honest. So with that being said, jump right into it. The opening matchup was the Tate Twins versus the Acclaimed. And this was the Tate Twins uh, AEW debut against the Acclaimed, who honestly are one of the most entertaining and best tag teams in AEW right now. And this was actually a very good opening tag team match. And, you know, the Tate Twins get a chance to get some good offense in on the Acclaimed. And the Acclaimed are perhaps one of the most vendors tag teams in AEW in 2021. And since Anthony Bones' return, they have missed a step. Simple as that. And... The Acclaimed won, but the Tate Twins did show some good stuff in this match, to be completely fair. And it was great to see the Acclaimed get such a fantastic reaction in front of a full crowd. Because it's the first full crowd that AEW Dark Elevation has ever had. Because of the recent li life returning to all, shall we say, in terms of crowds being able to attend events. This was a very good opening matchup. I enjoyed this one a great deal. And I thought both teams did a very good job. And this is the kind of matchup you'd like to see open a show like this. And the Acclaimed, as this to be said... It's the thing to possibly get, and they're starting to get a bit of fanfare behind them, to be completely honest with you. And not just um, because of the crowd, but because they are starting to get a bit of a face reaction, shall we say, from the crowd. You know, sometimes wrestling does that. This was no different. So, <laughs> thumbs up for that. And thumbs up for all four men for producing quite an entertaining opening match. So, well done for that. By the way, these matches will not be in necessarily in the correct order. But that was the opening match. I can tell you that, because they come out and... It was quite a good um, opening rap from uh, <laughs> Max Caster, so there we go. <laughs> and then in the next match, <clears throat> so uh, another match on the card was Tay Conte versus Ashley DM Boys. And Tay Conte, I've said before, she's had the best 2021 in the women's division, aside from Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker, because Britt Baker is the new AEW Women's Champion. She won the belt at double nothing, a very good match against Hikaru Shida. And this was... A short but good match. And Tay Conte, again, going from strength, from strength to strength in 2021, becoming yet another win. And, you know, again, showing a bit more of a different style than what she usually does. I mean, she does have a judo background, and she implements it in her wrestling. But, again, she does something a bit different every week, and she did it this time, too. She's very innovative. And that's something you're not seeing in a professional wrestler. And instead, she did a brilliant 2021, and it's continued in this one. So, definitely thumbs up to that. And the thumbs up to a fun but short that should take on to pick up against another win. They do these ties, so there we go. We also had Thunder Rosa versus Rika Tahaka. And I said um Thunder sorry, I said Thunder Rosa had a two great 2021. She has her Tay and Brit Break have had perhaps the best 2021 in the women's division. And again, another great win for Rekka. So for um for Thunder Rosa in this one. I enjoyed this one and thought it was too. And I thought, you know, if there's anything that you can take away from Rebel Th Thunder Rosa. She is a star. She is one of the best women wrestlers in the world. And she's going from strength to strength, despite the fact she's only been wrestling for six years. But you will never guess it. She's in it wrestling like a tenured veteran at this point. And this was no exception. She definitely showed it in this match. And I really enjoyed what she brought to this one. And, you know, it was a fun, short match. Record did get some decent offense in, but this was Thunder Rosa's night for sure. So thumbs up to that. Thumbs up to both of these for this one. Another match was Leila Hirsch versus Robin Renegade. And Leila Hirsch has had a very good 2021. She's been up there as well in terms of the women's division in AEW. And I think she's going to continue to go from strength to strength. And you could tell, you know, the first time she's ever wrestled in a crowd that size for AEW, she was enjoying it. And she's usually quite stoic in her ways. And she's not usually smiling much. I mean, but she smiled. She kind of, I don't think she could help it. And that's great to see that enthusiasm, enthusiasm sorry, to be completely honest. And she won the match in what was actually a fun but short match. You know, Robin Renegade did try to fight her way through, but Lady Hirsch, when she locks in that cross arm breakup, it's game over. And that's exactly what she did. And she did win this one. So thumbs up for that. And thumbs up to both of you. So there you go. We also had the Varsity Blondes versus the Chaos Project. And this was one of my matches that I'd like to be completely honest with you. I loved these two teams working with each other, and it's been building a little bit from um, past interactions between all four of them in um, recent times. 
But this was a very good tag match too. And once again, poor Serpentico being used as a weapon <laughs> by his partner, Luther. But you know what? Excuse me. I enjoyed this one a great deal, to be honest. This was a very good tag match. And this is one of, I think, Chaos Project's best performances to date. And that's saying something, because I've had some good ones in the past. And the Varsity Blondes, you know, had a very good showing here too. But I was really expecting Varsity Blondes to pick up the win here. And they, uh, the worst they did, they did it in very spectacular fashion. But they almost didn't win this match, because Chaos Project really showed some very good stuff in this match. And they were looking good to win the match as well. So, you know, both teams with a lot to prove, and they did. And... This was Varsity Bronze's first match since losing against the Young Bucks for the AEW Tag Team titles. But they showed very good points and good promise, as they always do. And the most perhaps the most babyface tag team in all of wrestling in AEW is the Varsity Bronze, no doubt about it. And they were very, very good in this match too, and a really good performance. And it's great to see them getting more and more over, because the fans were really behind them in this match. But Chaos Project... One of entertaining tag teams in wrestling, there's no other way to say it because it's so entertaining, so amusing and different, but they're also good. They were good here too, but this was a very good tag match, and this was what the AEW tag, division, tag team division is all about. So, definite thumbs up to all four men for this one. Well said, Big Swall and Red Velvet versus Nyla Rose and the Bunny. And I gotta give credit where it's due, I did not see the tag team with the Bunny and Nyla Rose coming to be honest with you, but you know what. That's good, you know, because of two very different um, approaches to things. Obviously, the Bunny's part of Matt Hardy's organization and Vicky Guerrero manages Nyla Rose. So maybe, maybe a partnership there? I don't know. I, I can see that, you know, building momentum because, you know, if there's one thing that Nyla Rose has been trying the last few times, is trying to get a decent tag team partner. She's not managed to find it. She found one in the Bunny. And that's something that you kind of absolutely love. And... You know, Red Velvet and currently Red Velvet and um, Big Swall, you know, I've approved tag team by now and one of the most entertaining tag teams in AEW, especially in the women's division, because they are one of the very few, you know, but by looks at tag teams full stop in the women's division, them and Kyan and King have formed a trio and it's been great to watch. But this was a good match too. I enjoyed the exchanges from all four women because it was a back and forth match. You know, it was very tough to pick a winner in this one. And, you know, it was cool to see. You know, these four women go at it in a tag match that I didn't expect uh, from one side in terms of Nida Rose and the Bunny working together, but they did. So definitely nothing wrong with that. And a good, good match here. So I enjoyed this one. So thumbs up to all four of them for this one. We also had Jack Evans versus as Penta El Zero Miero. And this was a cracking match, to be honest with you. And I wish... I only wish the match had gone a bit longer than it did. Because these two just went at it crazy, <laughs> no other way to say it. And Penzo's reaction was insane. And I think the fans were just happy to be seeing some of the wrestlers they haven't seen for a while. But Penzo in this one just tore the roof off the place. He really did. And, you know, this was a very good show from Jack Evans too. And we've got two unique styles against each other in this one. You're going to get a clash of styles that just works. And boy, did it. This was a very good but short match. And and Helico, sorry, sorry, and Jack Evans did lose, but Penta, I think, deserved the win because of his performance in this match was cracking. But then it's against Jack Evans. You're not going to get a bad match against Jack Evans. So, short but fun match. I really did enjoy this one. So, thumbs up for both of them. I think there's only one more to come. Just double checking. Getting ready. <laughs> Yes, yes, because my list is a bit different today. I apologise. Yep. And then, yep, that's it. And then, that's it. And then, the main event was Jungle Boy vs. J.D. Drake. And when I saw this announced, I was really looking forward to it because, you know, J.D. Drake is a versatile and great wrestler that can work with anybody. And there is nobody right now in AEW that's perhaps more over than Jungle Boy. His reaction when he came out was incredible no other way to say and the fans were so happy because he is now the number one contender for the aw world title he's been facing kenny maker in two weeks but you know since winning the battle royal you know he's become like the man to watch in aw and it's only been a few days since the battle royal to say since the battle royal win but you know obviously 
the most tenured veteran in AEW because he has had more matches than anyone in AEW. And I really loved yeah, what he brought in this match and I loved how him and JD Drake just worked together because it worked superbly. This was a really, really good main event and I thought both men just brought everything they had in the best way possible. And again, JD Drake is one of the most reliable wrestlers you can see where you can find it anywhere in AEW right now, if it's in Dark, Elevation or Dynamite. And him against Jungle Boy just clicked superbly. And I thought both men really brought something a bit more vicious to each other, shall we say, because JD Drake can hit hard. Jungle Boy was hitting hard back. That's something you like to see. And Jungle Boy winning was the right call because he's on such a momentum ride right now. And he, you know, he's got the crowd behind him, no doubt about it. And of course, as, aside from Judas from Fozzy, obviously, Chris Jericho, Sing Song at the end of the circle, Sing Song, Sing Song, sorry. You know, Jungle Boy's song is helping him a lot. But you know what? So is his wrestling um, style. He's working so hard and he's showing and the fans are behind him for that. And I can't help but absolutely respect that. And he won the match in what was a cracking main event. Great from both men, back and forth. And it was hard to pick a winner, even though I thought Jungle Boy was going to win because J.D. Drake came close a few times. But it was Jungle Boy's night. And I think he's the man to watch right now in AEW because he has been for a while. I've always liked him. But now it's his time, I think. Whether he's going to win the title or not. Who knows? We'll find out. <laughs> but on that note, I'm going to end the review here. Thank you so much for watching. I will see everybody next time. And until that time, take care.